Hello again folks, Eric Pearson here with another gaming demonstration video. Today I'm going on to a more pleasant topic in which we're going to use Simple Rockets 2 to demonstrate taking a rocket ship and putting it in orbit. This is a simpler rocketry simulation than Kerbal Space Program. It's not as complicated and therefore a little easier to get into and enjoy. Let me show you. So here we have the fictional planet Drew, and this is our sample rocket ship. You can build any kind of rocket ship you want in this game, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to go with what we have here. We have a capsule on top, some solar panels on the side, and multiple rocket stages to help get us into orbit. So, I'm going to simulate launching this thing from a planetary pad, getting it into orbit, and after one orbit, do a deorbit burn and hopefully splash harmlessly into the ocean. So let's get started. So, you can do a designer tutorial, a flight tutorial, or just a launch craft in sandbox mode, ditto for building craft, or there are certain challenges you can take on. I'm going to do something that mimics the flight tutorial, but with some extra flourishes. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is we have this interface here that allows us to set pitch and heading. I'm going to lock our current heading, but I'm going to change our heading angle as opposed to our pitching angle to a southerly direction. That will make it easier for us to do a splash down the ocean when we're done without having to do any overly exotic course corrections. Next thing I'm going to do is put our engines to 100% throttle, like so. You can see the indicator here. The blue number represents our fuel level. We'll see that more realistically represented once we trigger the engines. So let's get a close up. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Okay, at 1,000 meters, I'm setting the pitch angle to 75 and reducing it to 60% throttle so that the aerodynamic forces don't tear apart our ship. Okay, we're at 5,000 meters, changing pitch to 45 degrees, rolling gently. So right now we're coming up on the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the craft known as Max Q. Once we get up to about 15,000 meters altitude, we'll be able to go at throttle up to 100%. As you can see, we're pretty high up here. Okay, go for throttle up. And reduced pitch to 30 degrees. Okay, that's stage one. Jettison. Trigger. Okay, we're in good shape so far. Now I'm going to switch over to map view. Our map gives us a depiction of our trajectory. Right now we're on a ballistic trajectory. And... Eventually, at the rate we're going, we will eventually come back down and crash into the planet. But with some additional corrections at the right moments, we can turn this from a ballistic trajectory into an orbital one. This green triangle represents the apoapsis, or highest point of our trajectory. When we get to about 100 kilometers, I'm going to temporarily turn off our engines and coast a bit. We're getting there.
There we go. Okay, so... If I put the mouse here, the second number below our altitude is our time to arrival at this point. So 1.9 minutes until we reach the apoapsis, the peak of our trajectory. But at 30 seconds out, I'm going to trigger another engine burn. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called Vlock Velocity Prograde, which basically means I'm going to point us the direction that we're really traveling. So I'm going to lock Velocity Prograde, like so. Take a look at the timer here. We are 75 seconds away from our peak which means in about 30 seconds we're going to trigger another engine burn. So just wait for it. There are ways to speed up time over here, but I don't want to trigger too late. More on that later. Okay, about 10 seconds. 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, mark. So here we go. Now let's cut back to map mode. Our trajectory is getting longer and longer, but we're going to have to jettison our current stage because we're about to run out. Okay. Jettisoning. Triggering burn. Alright, very nice. Let's take a look and see what we're doing now. Our trajectory is getting longer and longer and eventually we will see an indicator showing what's called our apoapsis. Uh... Actually, no, the periapsis, which will be the lowest point of our trajectory. When we see a periapsis of 100 kilometers, that's when we're going to cut the engines again. Here we go. There it is. 7, 8, 9, and... Stop. Okay. So we have now achieved an orbital trajectory with a highest altitude of 355 kilometers and a lowest point of 101. So let's take a moment and enjoy what we've done for a minute. Let's just look at the view. Isn't that beautiful down there? Look at that. Now, we have solar panels on our craft, so I can click here and deploy those. So there we go. Now we can pretend that this is a photography satellite. Maybe we're taking satellite images for, some, for somebody like Google. Wouldn't that be nice? Beautiful, isn't it? So, you know, even if you did nothing else with this game, you could just put yourself in orbit and enjoy the view. Of course, there is a lot more that you can do with this game, and there will be more. This game is, like I said, currently in early access. Now, my plan is to do a deorbit and put this spacecraft down into the ocean again. We can pretend that this satellite has a limited lifespan and say its onboard systems will simply run out. We can pretend that. And so if we want to be responsible and not leave junk in orbit, we want to properly deorbit this craft and put us in the ocean. So how do we do that? Well, ideally we want to trigger a deorbit burn at the lowest point of our orbit so that we don't have to work as hard pushing the satellite down out of orbit. So 
what we could do when we've got a lot of time because we're here and we don't have to start really worrying until we get all the way around and come back around to this point again. I will speed things up in the interest of time. Ideally, with a little more precision, I could have made this orbit a little more circular, a little less elliptical. But this is just a basic demonstration. So if we focus here, I can click here, and we have this planned burn interface that enables me to adjust certain vectors to prepare for a planned burn. And when I tweak these vectors, I will see the effect that the planned burn will have on my anticipate, uh, anticipated trajectory. And I want that because I want to create a trajectory that splashes us harmlessly down into the ocean. So let's click here again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tug on this one gently, gently. And see if I can get us, see what I'm doing here, just carefully, just putting us down. Oop. That has us crashing down off the coast of these islands. That's not a bad goal, but maybe I can adjust it a little more. Whoop. Yeah, like so. Just to really make sure that it doesn't come down on anyone. Or maybe a little more. Let me tweak it a little more. Whoop. Whoop. Too much. It's a little touchy, but we can make this work. Oh, hey. Yeah, like I said, it's a little touchy. Okay, let's... Let's... Little... Little more. Little more. Just a little more. Oh. <laughs> Like I said, it's just a little touchy here. Alright. Down around there, and let's hope that's enough. Now, what I can do, now that I've set my planned burn here, the accuracy is high, the arrival time is in 40 minutes, but I'm not going to make you wait 40 minutes. I'll speed things up, but first... There is a delta V of 428 meters per second, a burn time of 24 seconds. So if I can make use of my thrusters for 24 seconds using the what's left of my fuel, then we will be able to successfully splash down, and I think we can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the node, which will prevent it to, from being updated. And I'm also going to toggle this button to have the craft perform an automatic burn when we reach the burn node. So it will automatically turn the engines on for us when we get to that point. So what I'm going to do now, let me zoom out and I'm going to speed up time here, like so. So two times, ten times, twenty-five times. So here we go, cruising along. And when we get close, And it says arrival time. We'll give it to the last, like... Uh, did you see what happened there? We're already seeing... We kind of flipped over. Because we're getting... We're positioning ourselves to do that burn. Let's go back to map mode. We're about six minutes from burn time. Fast forward a little more. Okay, about three minutes from burn time.
Okay. So we're about 70 seconds from triggering the burn. So if everything goes as we hope, then we'll be able to trigger the engines and push ourselves down out of orbit, making a successful splash down into the ocean. We appear to be over the ocean now. Thirty seconds, give or take. Okay, there's the burn, see? And our altitude is dropping. So we're pretty much pointed straight down. Descending. Okay, so... We stopped burning, but we still have plenty of fuel left, which is good, which meant that we had more than enough fuel to... Put us on track. Let's see where we're at. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so... Looks like we're on track to make a splash down into the ocean. In order to keep things clean, I can fold my solar panels back up. We're about 67,000 meters and dropping. Uh-oh, we're starting to tumble a bit. And it looks like our projected splashdown zone is starting to change. That's not good. Will we still be able to splash down? I don't know. Well, at the rate we're going, we might still come down in the ocean just off the coast of this one continent. And then we got some heat build up on re entry. Yeah, there is the coast. The way I see it, if we don't come down on land, I'll consider this successful. But you know, for a little fun, let's lock our velocity retrograde and turn around if we can. Can we turn around? Uh-oh. I'm trying to turn this around and... There we go. Can we turn around? I was hoping to turn around so that we could fire our engines. Nope, not really responding this time. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're cartwheeling. Okay, let's try and lock our velocity retrograde if we can, okay? 
Okay, let's see if we can slow ourselves down a little bit. Let's trigger the engines. We're slowing down a little bit. So we're slowly, gently settling down. We're descending. We're still descending. And then maybe if we swing this right, one last burst before we land. And we've splashed down. Very nice. And we even came down right side up, too. So here we are, peacefully bobbing in the ocean. And I believe we're off the coast of one of the continents here. We can check the map. Yeah, not that far out into the ocean, but at least we didn't land in a populated area. So I'd call this a pretty successful run here on Simple Rockets 2. So, I look forward to seeing what else I can do with this game. If opportunity allows, maybe I'll do some more demonstrations. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next game. Eric Pearson, signing off.